Hi everyone and welcome back to Happy Out Home. So in this video I thought you all may be interested in tips and tricks and learning how and things to think about if you all are deciding to paint the exterior brick of your home. We did ours, we painted our brick about four years ago and it is one of the best things that we ever did to our home. Of all the improvement renovations, and we've done plenty, this is one of the ones that just made such an impact to our home, was worth every penny, all the effort, and we absolutely, absolutely love. So I thought that I would share our experience, what we did, show you the before, show you the after, in case you all are thinking about doing something like that to your home. Um, it's a, you know, it's a big investment. It, you know, there will be maintenance involved in it, but you know, it's a lot to think about before you jump into that decision. So um, that is what this video is about. I hope you will tune in and please press like and subscribe because um, we have a lot more coming your way. All right. So as I said, I'm gonna talk about 10 um, things to think about if you are thinking about painting the exterior of your home. And the first thing I wanted to talk about and in the rest of it, I'm just gonna uh, show you parts of the home, but I just wanted to be on camera just to talk about this very first thing that I think is important before you get started is to understand and really think about why you wanna paint the exterior of your home. For me, I always have loved white painted brick homes. They're beautiful, they're timeless, they're classic, they're just, they're stunningly beautiful and I have always wanted to do it, but I feel that your home has to be a good candidate to do it. Um, two homes ago, we had a red brick home and it was fine. Red brick is very pretty. I know a lot of people look at their red brick and think, oh, this is dated, I need to do something about it. You know, it's not. Red brick homes are not dated, they're beautiful. And red brick is also very classic if it is, you know, a really type of pretty red brick. So, you know, don't feel like you need to jump on the bandwagon. Everybody's painting their red bricks, so you need to do it too. Because again, there is maintenance involved and it is an expense, so think carefully about that. I don't think that that's a good reason, um, but that's just my opinion. Uh, the home we had before this, uh, the brick was orange. It was an orange brick and um, so I wasn't a real fan of the color and the mortar was kind of, I, I didn't like the color of the mortar that went with it. So that was a good candidate to paint. We did not, we ended up moving. So we did not paint that, that home. Um, but this home was a perfect candidate to paint. The brick was yellow. The coins on the side, you know, at the corners were brown and the mortar was not like a great color either. So I think we had a very good candidate to paint our home and again, have never regretted it. One of the best decisions ever. Still to this day, get comments about how beautiful it is. And it just truly made the home very kind of majestic looking. You know, we sit on top of a hill and before it just, the color of the brick just didn't do the home justice, but now it is absolutely beautiful and we could not be happier with it. So I do want you to think very carefully about the reasons why you do it before you jump into it, because it is a big expense and you know, you are gonna have it for years to come because it's not something you can easily undo, be like, oops, I don't like it. You know, oh, there's a, you know, a lot of dirt on it now. I mean, you're, you're, gonna, you're stuck with it after that. So let's get into the other nine tips and um, things to talk about for painting the brick to your home. Okay. As I mentioned, there is gonna be maintenance involved and we have not had to repaint the sides since we uh, painted the home four years ago and it still looks great. If it is done right, there actually is little maintenance to the exterior. But of course, we'll discuss the steps involved to do it properly. It'll fly by, fly, fly by, and you know, drop like a big old nasty on the side of the house, and you know, go with a hose and wipe it off. But it's rare that that happens, and it's 
really not that big a deal. The biggest thing that has been maintenance has been the front white stoops. As you can imagine, you know, this being a horizontal surface and being stepped on and being rained on and delivery men, you know, coming by, this gets the dirtiest. You know, when you're talking about the sides of the house and the walls, it's much harder for dirt to get on, you know, the, the, the sides of the wall on, you know, like vertical surfaces, but of course it is much easier for the steps. So had these steps not been the exact same color as the brick, you know, had they been, you know, like flagstone steps that we have over there in the walkway, I would not have painted them. But the only reason I did paint them was because they were the exact same, you know, brick as the side of the house, and it just made sense to paint them. It made no sense to leave these steps, you know, the brown and yellow. So my advice, there is maintenance to this, and if you don't want to deal with that, then maybe painting your steps is not a good idea. You know, again, if it's some sort of different material, you know, you have flagstone or some other type of stoop, then you may not want to paint it and just leave it as is. But as I said, we did because ours was the exact same color as the brick, so it did make sense. And what is the maintenance involved? We have repainted it. Of course, if you just come out and power wash it, you know, that works well too to freshen it up. But of course, a power washer, if it is too heavy, it can, you know, damage it and pull some of the paint off. So you just need to be very careful with that. Um, but, you know, that always does a good job in freshening it up. But, you know, repainting it once a year just gives it a much fresher look. Number three, only paint brick if it is in very good condition. Do not paint it for the reason of trying to cover up something on your home that is in repair. It needs to be repaired. Do not you know, try to cover it up. It's just gonna cause more issues. You wanna make sure your brick is in really good condition and can handle the painting. And you don't wanna cause any more problems. You know, you're not trying to, you don't wanna cover up some mold or you know, a bunch of cracked brick that really needs to be, you know, maybe new mortar needs to be put on it or whatever. Just don't paint it to cover up an issue. Make sure that it is in really good condition. Number four, something to think about when making the decision. One of another reason that I wanted to paint it was to neutralize the mortar. When you are painting the brick and you're painting the mortar, you're neutralizing the whole look and creating a white, seamless, cohesive look. If you have a couple, um, if your mortar is drastically different than the color of your brick, then maybe that's a reason that you want to paint it. If it's, you know, just a really yellow, yellow looking mortar and it's just really unattractive and it doesn't match up with the color of the brick, then that is another good reason. But just to get that neutralized look and to have everything look white and cohesive, it's just beautiful. And it is something that I was going after and that was another reason that I chose to paint the home. Number five, consider adding a, tr a contrasting color to the color design that you are choosing with your white home. We painted these garage doors black and I absolutely love them. This was one of the best decisions that you know I made with a, when I chose a contrasting color, and I think it just turned out beautiful. And they still look great as well. You know, in addition, we did have the lanterns painted for a pop of black between the columns, so that looks really good too. And it's just black and white is classic, never goes out of style, and I love the look. As you know, our um, whole backyard design is black and white. You know, our pool and pool house, those were the colors that I chose. And so this just coordinates extremely well with the back of the house. 
Now the black that I did choose is a very basic black, but it is a real black black. It's Sherwin-Williams tricorn black, and it is, again, a like black black. So that is a great option to contrast with the white. I also think, um, I've heard some people say, choose five colors when you are painting the exterior of a home. I prefer, my preference is three colors. Um, you know, the wall color, a garage color, and the roof color. Um, that's my preference, just to kind of keep it a little bit more simple than looking a little bit too busy. I mean, some people do five, and it can look very nice too, but in my design, I just wanted to keep it very simple. So I have um, the white walls, black for the railings, the lanterns, and um, the door. And the roof is sort of like a dark gray. So I mentioned we painted the front door. So when we painted the front door, you know, I painted the entire frame black. Previously, um, these windows were a different color. The trim was a different color. I'll put a picture up of what it looked like. But just to paint the entire thing black, just made it so much more cohesive looking and really helped with the whole look of the home. And the lanterns, you know, painted the lanterns, um, didn't change them out, just painted them, had the painters do that. And it just kind of helped with the whole look. It just freshened everything up. So I recommend doing that if you have a front door and you can give it more of a cohesive look, you know, and eliminate one of the colors, then I would suggest doing that. Number six, make sure you choose the right white. There are hundreds of shades of whites and the color will appear different depending on the time of day. You know, right now it's probably about three or four. Um, you know, we have some shade over there, as you can see. Um, depending on the season, it can look whiter um, than other times. You just want to make sure that whatever shade you pick, you're going to be happy with it. When it's dark out, when, you know, there's cloud covering, it's going to look different in different seasons, and you just want to pick the correct shade, something that you're happy with. And the way that you can do this is to test several different colors on the wall, and I'll put a patch up and show you that that's what I did on the back of the house. I tested four different colors, and I picked the one on the far right, and that, the color that we chose for the home is called alabaster and it is a nice beautiful warm white and it um it doesn't tr tremendously change colors uh, i know there are certain shades out there that you know tend to look dirty at times i've always been very happy with this one um, but again i did test it along with several other whites and you can see how white it does appear compared to those other ones so that is the color on our home, and it has been a perfect color for us. Sherwin-Williams Alabaster. And as we are talking about uh, colors, exterior colors, as you know, um, probably many of you have seen the video of our pool house, but it is also made of bricks. All the columns are bricks, the side are cedar, and I kept the same color design, the same color palette, and used um, again, three colors, uh, black, you can see like the lanterns are black, the roofing is black, and everything else is white, and I used it in the alabaster white, used the very same color as I did on the home, so everything matches, and just kept everything very cohesive and timeless looking. I'm not going to have to, you know, want to repaint this a different color in a few years. Absolutely love the white, it's beautiful, haven't had any problems with, you know, the the painted brick. So yeah, just wanted to mention that, that that is in the very same color. So to get the best looking and professional job, and we hired a professional and perhaps you would too, um, that's what I recommend, unless you are like really, really handy at stuff like this, but I wouldn't want to, if I'm not, you know, testing something out on such a big job as this. And the home is very big, so 
of course we chose to do it professionally, you have to properly prep before painting. And the very first step in prepping the home is to power wash the brick. This step is very important and must be done to, to, to achieve a successful job. Um, it will also have to dry completely before you put any paint or primer on. So our painters prepped everything, they power washed everything, they power washed the windows, the trim, the gutters, the dormers, and it put plastic, you know, all over the lights um, to make sure, you know, and that took an entire day um, to prep everything properly to make sure that it is ready for the primer. So it needs to dry completely. The brick is still wet the next day, then it's just not gonna stick. So you wanna make sure that everything is completely dry before you do that. Oh, and one little tip, <laughs> make sure all your windows are properly closed and locked from the inside, or you know what will happen. You'll get water inside the home, which is what happened with a couple windows because I noticed they weren't locked. But, so I'll never let that happen again. So there is a tip. Before priming, make sure that you properly, properly power wash everything to make sure it is completely clean of all grime and dirt. So once you have let the brick dry completely, you want to use a really good masonry primer before applying the paint. And my painters tinted, you know, the stark white masonry primer just a little bit um, I assume with the color that we use, the alabaster. And they also used a roller to get the primer to adhere really well on the brick. So my recommendation from what I saw them do and the fact that we've had no problems is that trying to spray the primer on and then trying to spray um, the paint on top of it may not adhere really well. So they rolled it you know, they rolled the primer on the whole house and I'll put pictures up of that. Um, but we haven't had any issues. I was glad they did it. And it looked like a lot of work, but I think that that is the proper way to do it, to use a roller with the primer and make sure it sticks really well. And to kind of get in, you know, all the grooves where all of the, the mortar is. So that worked really well. And that is my suggestion. So number nine, as I mentioned previously, when you do the painting, um, you can spray it on, um, but you know just make sure that it is properly pr primed and the primer has dried. Um, so that'll be you know like a next day job, and you can spray it on the walls. And I believe um, my painters did one coat primer and one top coat. I don't think it was two coats. I believe it was one coat. And that has, again, worked for four years and we haven't had a problem with it. And number 10, paint the railings to freshen up the space. Again, we use the same color tricorn black to keep everything cohesive. And we painted these railings, we painted all the railings in the front. Um, and it just brightened everything up. And they were hand painted, they weren't sprayed. Can you imagine spraying them? <laughs> that looked like it would have just made like a huge mess and probably gotten all over the paint. So the railings were hand painted at the very end. And as you can see, this massive retaining wall, um, that was also part of it, you know, again, because it was the same color brick, that was painted as well. If it were a different material, a flagstone or something, I wouldn't have painted it. But because it was the exact same color, it did need a freshen up. And very last tip I have for you is to add up lighting to make your home completely lit. It is so beautiful in the evening and I will put a picture or maybe I'll try to do a little, a little video in the evening of how it looks, but I just absolutely love it in the evening. To drive up and see all those lights up on the windows is just remarkable and it just looks so pretty and majestic. Not to mention, you know, when it snows or just at any time of the year, anytime I just come up and see the house lit, it's so pretty. So adding exterior lighting really 
upgrades the home and just takes it to the next level. And again, I'll try to do a video and show you what that looks like, but those are my tips. I hope you enjoyed them. Our grass is so dry. Oh my gosh, it's been like such a hot July and a hot August. We don't have a watering system and I haven't been out here watering. So everything is like super dry, hoping, you know, it's September now, hoping we'll get a break from that. But usually the grass is always so green and pretty. So it's very dry now, but I hope you liked the video. I hope that has given you some suggestions and tips if you are thinking about painting the exterior of your home. It is a great investment. It is expensive. You know, it's a lot of labor. I don't know, it probably took three weeks for my painters to do this. Um, again, we have a very, very large home, so it took longer probably than most, but it is a very you know, expensive thing to do. And you have to, you know, really want it and to invest the time and money into it. And, you know, think carefully about if you do really want to paint your brick. Again, don't do it because everyone else is doing it. Doing it for the reasons that you think of, that you like, and because something you really want. All right, guys, those are my tips. I will see you next time. Pl press like and subscribe if you so feel inclined. And we'll talk again. Bye.